Welcome back, mathematicians. Let's take care of the last section of Unit 1, describing pairs of angles, section 1.6. Our essential question, how can you describe angle relationships and use these descriptions to find angle measures? So our objectives are mathematicians will be able to identify complementary and supplementary angles, in addition to identifying linear pairs and vertical angles. So we need to start by understanding some key vocabulary and core concepts. So we've got complementary and supplementary angles. So pairs of angles can have special relationships. And most of this section is all about these special relationships. So the measurements of the angles or the positions of the angles in the pair determine the relationship. Super important. The position of the angles in the pair determine the relationship. So if we've got complementary and supplementary angles. So complementary angles are when two positive angles whose measures have a sum of 90 degrees. Each angle is the complement of the other. Here are some examples. So here we have angle 1 and angle 2 together equal 90 degrees. So if we add them together, they'll add up to be 90. Here we have two angles that are separate from each other. They're not sharing the same side. But they still are complements of each other. In other words, they both will add up to be 90 degrees. So whether angles share the same side or not, complementary angles are when two positive angles have a sum of 90 degrees. So likewise, supplementary angles are two positive angles whose measures have a sum of 180 degrees. So each angle is the supplement of the other. Again, two examples where they add up to be 180 degrees. And then adjacent angles, one more time, our complementary angles and supplementary angles can be adjacent angles or non-adjacent angles. Well, adjacent angles are when two angles share a common vertex and side, but have no common interior points. So here's a great example. These two angles, angle 5 and angle 6, are adjacent angles. They share a common side and a common vertex. Example in which are non-adjacent angles 7 and 8. They do not share a side and they do not share a vertex. Alright, let's practice identifying pairs of angles in example 1. In the figure, name a pair of complementary angles, a pair of supplementary angles, and a pair of adjacent angles. So let's start by considering 37 degrees plus 53 degrees. So this angle here, angle BAC, is a measure of 37 degrees, and angle RST has a measure of 53 degrees. So when we add these two angles together, it'll sum to be 90 degrees. So we can say that angle BAC and angle RST are complementary angles. We can consider 127 degrees and uh, 53 degrees, so angle CAD and angle RST, 127 degrees and 53 degrees, will sum to equal 180 degrees. So angle CAD and angle RST are supplementary angles. And because BAC and angle CAD share a common vertex and side, and we can see that here, so here's the common side, and then here's the common vertex. So these two angles share common vertex inside, therefore they are adjacent angles. Alright, let's take a look at finding angle measures, example 2. We have two parts here. Part A, angle 1 is a complement of angle 2, and measure of angle 1 equals 62 degrees. Find the measure of angle 2. So let's start by sketching a diagram. We know that together they are complementary, so that means they're going to add up to be 90 degrees. So I can start by sketching a right angle and then just put a ray somewhere on the interior of my right angle. It doesn't matter where. So here's an example. And then label angle 1, angle 2. We know that angle 1 is 62 degrees. We're trying to figure out angle 2. So after we draw a diagram, we can subtract the 62 from 90 degrees, resulting in 28 degrees. So the measure of angle 2 equals 28 degrees. Alright, next, angle 3 is a supplement of angle 4, and measure of angle 4 is 47 degrees, so find the measure of angle 3. Start with a diagram, so supplement means they're going to add to be 180 degrees, so start by sketching 
a straight angle and then include a ray coming off that straight angle to create two angles. So angle 3 and angle 4, doesn't matter which one's which. Angle 4 will label the 47 degrees, so we're just trying to find out what angle 3 is. So if we subtract 47 degrees from 180 degrees, then we'll get the measure of angle 3, which is 133 degrees. Alright, mathematicians, now that we've done a few examples together, you try these on your own. So pause the video here and take a moment to think through numbers 1 through 4, and then unpause the video to check your answers. All right, so check your answers, see how you did. And bring any clarifying questions into class tomorrow. All right, so let's step it up a notch and include some algebra into some of these examples. So when viewed from this side, the frame of a ball return net forms a pair of supplementary angles with a crown. Find the measure of angle BCE and the measure of angle ECD. So right now what we know from looking at our picture is that these two angles are supplementary. So that means we can conclude that they will add up to be 180 degrees. So we'll start by writing out an equation using the fact that these two angles add up to be 180 degrees. Write an equation to start and then substitute what we know. So we know that 4x plus 8 represents angle BCE and x plus 2 represents angle ECD. Combine like terms. So at this point it's all algebra skills. So we solve for x. x is 34. So our next step is to evaluate the given expressions knowing that x is equal to 34. So we'll start with angle BCE which has the expression 4x plus 8, and then we substitute 34 for x, do order of operations, so the measure of angle BCE comes out to be 144 degrees. And then the measure of angle ECD has the expression x plus 2, substitute 34, add 2, so 36 degrees is the measure of angle ECD. All right. Another core concept, linear pairs and vertical angles. These are two types of angle relationships that we need to learn about. So a linear pair is when there's a non-common side that are opposite rays, and then the angles in the linear pair are supplementary. So here's a great example for angle 1 and 2 are a linear pair, and they happen to add up to be 180 degrees. And then vertical angles are when the sides form two pairs of opposite rays. So here we have um, lines that are intersecting each other to form four angles and the vertical angles are the ones that are across from each other so they do not share a common side so angles four and five are vertical angles and angle three and angle six are vertical angles all right so let's practice identifying these types of angle pairs so identify all the linear pairs and all the vertical angles in this figure so just think about when finding vertical angles, you want to look for angles that are formed by intersecting lines. That's very important when trying to identify vertical angles. So a good strategy to use here would be to highlight intersecting lines. So this line and this line will intersect each other. Let me see if I can do a better job with highlighting that. There we go. So those two lines are connecting all the way through and intersecting right here. So our pairs of vertical angles would be angle 1 and angle 5. There are no other pairs of angles that are vertical. Now to find linear pairs, look for adjacent angles. Adjacent angles would be side by side and have to be um, supplementary. So they have to add up to be 180 degrees. So we can say that angle 1 and angle 4 form a linear pair, and so do 4 and 5. So here we have this line and then this ray, so angles 1 and 4. Angle 1 and angle 4 form a linear pair. And then if I highlight 
this line with this ray, so then we can say angles 4 and 5 form a linear pair. All right, so fi finding angle measures in a linear pair, example 5, we have two angles form a linear pair. The measure of one angle is five times the measure of the other angle. Find the measure of each angle. So first start by sketching a diagram. So when you draw your diagram, let x be the measure of one angle, and then the measure of the other angle is 5x. Because we know that one angle is five times the measure of the other angle. So we'll let x represent the smallest, and then the other angle is five times whatever x is. So when you sketch your diagram, the smaller angle will be labeled x, and the larger angle will be labeled 5x. All right, and then our next step is to use the fact that angles of a linear pair are supplementary to write an equation. So we can say x plus 5x equals 180. Solve for x, so combine like terms. Isolate x, so x equals 30. And then substitute 30 for 5, uh, sorry, for x, and you get that the measures of the angles are 30 degrees and 5 times 30, which is 150 degrees. All right, there's definitely some concept summary here, interpreting diagrams that we need to discuss here. So there are some things that you can conclude from just looking at a diagram. And then there's some things that you cannot conclude. For example, here are some things you can conclude from the diagram below. We can conclude that all points shown are coplanar. We can conclude that points A, B, and C are collinear and B is between A and C. Again, we cannot conclude that B is the midpoint, but we can conclude that B is between A and C. We can conclude that line AC and ray BD and ray BE intersect at point B. Angle DBE and angle EBC are adjacent angles, and angle ABC is a straight angle. Point E lies in the interior of angle DBC. So these are all statements that we can conclude. And then these are things that we cannot conclude. We cannot conclude that segment AB is congruent to segment BC. Again, we do not know that B is the midpoint, so therefore we cannot conclude that this segment AB is congruent to segment BC unless we have more information. We cannot conclude that angle DBE is congruent to angle EBC. We do not know enough about where ray BE is located on the interior angle DBC, so therefore we cannot conclude that this is a bisector, so we can't conclude that those two angles are congruent. We also cannot conclude that angle ABD is a right angle. It may appear to look like a right angle, but we cannot conclude we do not have enough information. So some things that could make it so that we could conclude some of these statements is we would need to see markings. Markings are essential for making some of these conclusions here and or given information in the form of geometric notations. All right, that's all for this final lesson. What angle pairs can you identify in this picture? All right, see you in class.